When it comes to ballet, you've got the five basic positions of the arms, and then of course, what about the feet? With ballet dancing, you've got five most basic positions for the feet, and almost every child and adult that does dance at some point is gonna learn these. So we'll begin, of course, in first position. For first position, the heels are gonna be together. You wanna pull in tight with the stomach, and you're always opening, and pushing down through the neck and the shoulders and the chest. We're gonna take the heels together and going to open the toes. Now don't worry, your toes don't have to be open at a full 180 degrees, even though that would be considered technically perfect. What's most important is to make sure that you're working within your range of motion. So if your toes are a bit more turned in, that's perfectly okay. You want to make sure that anytime you bend your knees, the knees are right over your toes. So you're always working within your range of motion. What's next? Second position. We'll open the feet up wide. So I'm extending and the heels are open more than hip width apart. The toes are open wide as well. So this is second position for the feet. Next, we have third. So third is a more introductory or basic position. This is something that you would do in maybe a beginner ballet class. We incorporate it sometimes into the Ballet Beautiful workouts and it's definitely gonna be a big part of any children's ballet class as well. So you'll bring the heel to the toe, both knees straight. So it's this nice position where the thighs are crossed, you're pulling in with the stomach and that works on both sides Heel to toe, I have to look down because it's a position that I'm not using as frequently. Good. So you've got that nice cross through the legs. And this is really, if you're doing a workout or um, if you're dancing, you don't feel as comfortable with the technique or with your own turnout, etc. third position is a great, great place to start. From third, we'd open up the feet, adding space right between the legs into fourth position. So fourth position is anytime the feet are open like this. So you're pulling in with the stomach, the feet are wide, and you've still got that nice turnout coming from the hips and cross through the thighs. Fourth position, the knees can be straight, the knees can be bent. There's a lot of different ways to achieve a fourth position, but this would be the absolute most basic form. And then of course we have fifth. So fifth position, you're crossing toe to heel and toe to heel on each foot. You wanna pull in with the stomach and you're opening from the hips. So you've got this nice opening through the thighs and a very good, strong cross. I would say fifth position is the most advanced of each position that we're gonna to do today. And so that's something to say if you don't wanna overwork um, your rotation or if you feel any tension or stress on your hips or on your knees, then I would start with third and work your way into a better, tighter fifth position. One thing to keep in mind if you're working towards a better fifth position would be to start with the feet a little more open, inching your way across as you continue your training. So this is fifth position and the five positions of the feet. In ballet, when we're talking about the positions of the arms and arm movements, we use the term port de bras and the literal translation is the carriage of the arms. So it's the way that you move the arms and carry them through space. Now, the most basic five positions of ballet arms, first position. The arms start out in front of you. Imagine, um, as every ballet teacher I think says, that you're holding a beach ball. You've got this nice space between your chest and your fingertips. The elbows are lifted. You don't want to droop here. You want to stay nice and engaged through the center and open through that chest. So you've got that beautiful ballerina posture and here are your arms in first position. From first, we would move on to second position. That's just opening up the arms to the side. Now, there's a lot of different techniques, but one thing is gonna hold true in all of them. You don't wanna bend through the elbows. You don't wanna have a break. This would what we would call a scarecrow arm, and that's a bad thing in ballet. You don't ever want the elbows to be drooping unless, of course, it's part of your swan arm. So, second position, you open the arms out, hands are wide. I like to think of having my hands in my peripheral vision, so you're not too far behind you. You don't wanna ever be overarched here. So you can see those hands to your side, and the fingers are curled in nicely. Third position comes next, and that would just be bending one arm across. So, taking it straight up to the front, just like in first position. Again, think about that nice beach ball, nice roundness, openness of your chest, and the other arm is gonna remain in second position, and this position is gonna work 
on both sides. So after third, we have fourth position. So we would take the arm up. The hand on the other side would remain in second position. So you're lifted, you're pulling in, and you're opening through that chest. You can close and change and use fourth position on the other side. And the last final position is fifth position. So the arms are up high over your head. Again, same thing. The hands and arms should be in your peripheral vision. You don't want to have them too far back and you never want to take that kind of arch in your spine. So hands up, fifth position, and there we have our five positions of arms. So what does plie mean and how do you do one? Plie means bend of the knees. There's a lot of different ways to incorporate a plie. So let's start with the most basic, a plie in first position. I'm gonna start with a demi plie, which means a half bend. In first position, when you're doing a demi plie, it's a smaller bend of the knees, but I'm actually taking my body down quite low. What you notice, look down to my heels. The heels are on the floor. This is how we distinguish a demi plie from a grand plie in first position. What's a grand plie? A large plie, a plie that is very, very big. So demi plie, heels stay on the floor. Grand plie, you're gonna come through that demi and you're gonna drop all the way down, lifting those heels up, lowering the heels back down to demi plie and lifting up nice and high. So remember, a grand plie means big. Grand size plie here in second position. You could be in first, fifth, even in fourth, where you're coming down, you're moving through, and you're taking those heels all the way down and up off the floor. If you're following along at home, you're just getting started, you can use a bar, a wall, a chair, your sofa, whatever you've got to add that little bit of extra stability while you practice and perfect your plies. French tendu means to pull or to stretch. We also incorporate tendus frequently throughout the Ballet Beautiful workout. They're a great warm up and a great way to tone your ballet muscles. So, what does a tendu look like and how do we use that? Again, thinking about pulling, stretching. This is great because ballet is all about extending the body through space. So, tendu, you're taking one leg and you're stretching it out long. You could brush the leg to the front for a tendu front. So, we have tendu front, tendu side, and of course, there's also a tendu back. Whatever the position is, just remember to keep that toe on the floor, stretch those legs nice and long. Degage is a movement where you're brushing the leg off of the floor. So tendu means to pull or to stretch, and degage means to disengage. So you're moving through your tendu into your degage as you brush the leg off of the floor. These are movements that you're gonna use at the ballet bar. We're gonna use them in the center for our ballet beautiful workout. Releve means raised. This is a movement in classical ballet where you're lifting the body up with the legs and demi or a full point depending on your footwear. You can perform a releve on two feet with the knees straight. Here I am in first position. You can incorporate a plie. But a releve can be performed on one foot as well. So there's a lot of variation when it comes to a releve. From a fitness perspective, I love releves because they are a great way to tone the calves and the lower body. Plie releve in second position in the center or at the bar is an excellent exercise for toning through your calves, your thighs. If you're also working your core, Releves can be performed on two feet, on one foot. There are tons and tons of variations on how to incorporate a releve into your ballet class or ballet beautiful workout. Susu means over, under. It's performed most typically in classical ballet starting from fifth position. The hips are open, toes turned out, heel to toe with the feet, engaged with the core. Susu can be done in a releve, so you can take a demi plie, a bend of those knees, lifting up into fifth position, crossing the legs, crossing the feet. And a susu can also be performed into a pique, which you would do at the bar or even 
in the center. I love susus because they tone the legs, they tone the butt, and they engage the core. So you're working a lot of your ballet muscles all at once. It's a position of the feet where the toe is at the top of the ankle and the base of the calf. It can be performed to the front, devant, wrapped with the heel in front, the toe behind, or to the back and derriere. This is a position that you're gonna be using in combination with other movements in your ballet class or a ballet beautiful workout. So you may see a coup de pied with a big brush to the side and coup de pied, pied front and back and front and back. I love this exercise because you're pulling up and out of the standing leg. You're engaging your core, you're opening through your hips and you're really getting great toning for your legs, for your thighs and for your core. So while it's a position of the foot, it can be used to work your entire body. The working leg is bent and the foot is in coup de pied, moving from the back to the front with a rapid movement. This is an exercise that you typically do later on in your bar work when the feet and the legs are nice and warm. I love the way that a petite batma tones through your core. It takes quite a lot of control, but also through the standing leg, you're pushing nice and long, you're working through your butt and derriere, and also through the thighs. The hips are open, it takes lots of control, and it's just a great overall toning exercise for the legs and the butt. classical ballet, this is a movement that can be performed with the working foot and leg either on the floor where you're brushing and moving in a circular motion or off the floor, even on layer. There are many variations of a rond de jambe. I love rond de jambes from a fitness perspective because they're toning your inner thighs. Both legs are straight. You're brushing, squeezing long through the legs and the inner thighs. And it's a wonderful exercise for toning your ballet muscles. What exactly is an arabesque and what does it look like? Basically, it's any time when you have that back leg straight, you wanna pull it tight through the stomach, the standing knee can be straight, it can be bent, and then there's a variety of positions that we can do for the arms. First, second, third position in arabesque, what does that mean? Well, it's all about your port de bras, which again means carriage of the arms. First arabesque, you're stretching out long, the side arm is open here. You wanna take that into second arabesque. I'm gonna close it and cross the arms, reaching across. Third arabesque, open those arms up. So this is the three basic positions in arabesque for your ballet class or your ballet beautiful workout. This is a movement that's gonna be performed with a lot of energy, where you're transferring your weight from one leg onto another. The foot can be on point, on demi point, even on flat depending on the movement. There are tons of variations of piques because it all depends on the position of the working leg. You can do a pique into arabesque, a pique into attitude, a pique into passe, even a pique turn where you're turning around. I love piques because they let you really stretch those ballet muscles. The muscles are long, your standing knee is straight, and you're really extending and toning through that standing leg. Cambre means arched, and in ballet, this is a term that's used to describe a bend through the upper body. Cambres can be done to the front, to the side, and also to the back. You see them very often at the beginning of a ballet class as part of the warm-up. It's a great way to open up and stretch through the back, the shoulders, and the chest, and it's also great for building strength and control through your core and your upper body while working on building beautiful posture. I love combres because they help release the tension, they stretch you out, but they also build control. An 
attitude is a classical ballet position performed with the working knee bent. Attitude can be performed to the front, en devant, to the side, and a la seconde, or to the back and derriere. In an attitude, the standing knee can be straight, it can be bent, the standing foot can be flat, or on demi, or full point, depending on the exercise or your choreography. I love an attitude when it comes to my workout because this is a great exercise for toning the back of the legs and the butt, particularly when you're performing attitude and derriere. You'll see this quite a lot in the Ballet Beautiful method. Sometimes I'm doing an attitude on the floor, on the mat, little lifts to the back are excellent for toning, but I also love an attitude and a standing series. If you add in a port de bras, then that gives you the ability for an extra bend and twist through the waist, which is also going to target your waist and your core. So depending on the position of your movement, you're gonna work a different series of ballet muscles. Attitude front takes quite a lot of strength and control through the abs and core as well. So I love that exercise for toning the full body. It's a great exercise for toning the abs, the legs, and the butt, and also for getting your heart rate up. Typically, you would perform a grand mat in either third or fifth position. You can do a grand mat to the front, to the side, or to the back. Using and pulling in with the stomach muscles and the core, stretching long through both legs, so you're working all of those ballet muscles in your legs and your butt. In ballet and Ballet Beautiful, we talk a lot about moving through our standing and our working legs. The standing leg is your supporting leg. It's the leg that's gonna support the body while you do the movement. The leg can be straight, it can be bent, the foot can be flat, you can be on your half point or on full point. The working leg, by contrast, is the leg that is lifting, that's bending, that's performing the movement that we're doing. So in your Ballet Beautiful class, in your ballet workouts, you're gonna be moving back and forth from your standing to your working leg, right to left on both sides. This is a connecting step that's most frequently used at the bar as part of the warm up, and we also use them quite frequently in the ballet beautiful workout. Depending on your port de bras, you can add variation. You're bending and stretching the knees as you transfer the weight from one foot to the other. Tonlié can be done on the floor and tondu with the toes down, but also off of the ground. I love tonliers because they provide great toning. We're bending and stretching the legs. So you're working the ballet muscles through your legs, through your butt, and also through your core. It's a great way to warm up your muscles, get your heart rate up, and get that awesome ballet beautiful toning. A balancé is a rocking step where the balance or the weight passes from one foot to another. So we'll go from the right to the left to the right. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's always a nice rhythm in the movement. It can be done to the front, to the back, the knees straight, the legs straight. There's many variations when it comes to performing your balancé. From a fitness perspective, I love balancés because we're using your plie. It's got a nice, dancey motion to it, and it's great for getting the heart rate up. Passé means past. In classical ballet, this is a position that's performed with the working knee bent, and the toe is gonna move up and down that standing leg. The knee is gonna come into a triangle position with the knee open, the hip open, You'll see a passe at the bar as part of your warm up. The foot can be flat, it can be on demi point. Oftentimes, you'll see passes in a pique passe here or a pique turn that would be performed with the turn. Often in a pirouette as well. So you're lifting up and lowering from that passe position. We use a lot of passes in Ballet Beautiful because I love the way that this exercise targets and tones the legs. It engages the core, particularly when you're working on your demi-point, you have an even bigger range of motion. A 
pirouette is a turn on one leg. In classical ballet, pirouettes can be performed in a variety of positions. The most typical pirouette would be from fourth position. So you can take a tendu to the back, and then stretch down into a lunge. In the balancing tradition, which is how I was trained, your front knee would be bent and the back knee is stretched long. You're gonna stretch long with the front arm, um, looking all the way out over those fingers, bend that front knee and just lift up and lower back down. In a more classical ballet or classical training, both knees would be bent as your preparation. Pirouettes can also be done in fifth position. We would begin in a tendu front, close to fifth, bend the knees, lift up and over. When it comes to turning, there's many, many variations and it all depends on your starting and finishing position. In classical ballet, saute is a type of jump and the type of saute that you're performing depends on the position of the body. There are many, many variations. You can do a saute in arabesque, for example, and also as part of your petite allegro or small jumps, which are typically performed in the center of the room, but could also be done at the bar. So let's say you're doing sautés in first, second, and fifth position. Sautés are great for getting your heart rate up. They're excellent toning. So look out for a saute in your next ballet class, Ballet Beautiful Workout. Jeté means throwing or thrown. This is a jump in ballet, a step where you're brushing, you're bending and brushing as you jump up in the air to land down. There's several variations of a jeté. You could do one in petite allegro where you're bending and you're brushing. And then there's also a grand jeté, which is probably the most famous, a big leap through the air at the end of class or when you're on stage. Jetés are great because they take a lot of power, so they're really good for toning the legs. Of course, you have to use your core as well, and they're also gonna get your heart rate up. Anytime you're jumping, that heart rate is gonna go sky high. So look out for a jeté in your next ballet class, Ballet Beautiful Workout.